Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Weekly Awakening Podcast. This is your host, Cosmic Calling, back with another weekly astrology update. So this week, we got a lot happening. We have the full moon in Pisces, and the full moon in Pisces will be coming Wednesday night at 9.35 p.m. That is East Coast time. And this full moon will be conjunct Saturn. So the sun will be in Virgo, but the moon will be in Pisces, and the moon will be conjunct Saturn at the time of the full moon. The next day, on the 31st, we're still going to be in that new moon. We're in that full moon energy. And the moon, as it's moving through Pisces, will go opposite Mercury retrograde. We got Mercury retrograde already in 21 degrees. Mercury is flying through Virgo. And then... Uh, the very end of the full moon transit, the full moon conjuncts Neptune and Pisces on its way out into Aries. So the full moon, we're going to be feeling the most on Wednesday night into Thursday morning, but we're still in that full moon energy until the moon moves out of Pisces or moves out of the sign that it was having the full moon in. And so there's really these sort of interesting play by play, and I'm going to talk about that. But like I said, the moon's going to be conjunct Saturn, and then it's going to be... Um, conjunct Neptune on its way out. So there's a lot happening. I'm excited about this full moon, though. There's going to be pushing through some stuck energy. I'm going to be talking about yesterday, Monday the 28th, Uranus stationed retrograde in the sign of Taurus. And I didn't drop this episode yesterday. I did not sleep. I don't know about anyone else, but Sunday night, the moon moved into Aquarius, you know, which is also ruled traditionally by Saturn, but also Uranus. And I love to give Aquarius a little bit of Uranus energy because I feel like Aquarius energy is very much Saturn and Uranus. And when that happened, I fell asleep fine. But it was like the middle of the night it moved into, into Aquarius. I woke up at like two in the morning and I could not go back to sleep. I just could not. I don't know if anyone else had that experience. I know one of my friends had the same experience as well. Um, And so yesterday I did a lot, but it was a little bit, I was sort of out of it. I just was like, I cannot do this podcast episode because I'll be all over the place if I do it. And last night though, I got a very good night's sleep. So I am here and ready to talk about this. So let's talk about Uranus stationing retrograde and what is going to be happening with that. And I want to talk about a little bit of this past weekend's transits too, uh, with the sun going opposite Saturn. But when Uranus stations retrograde, the really big thing that came for me, and again, when it's in this retrograde motion, I'll continue to talk about it over the next few months while it's retrograding. So for my fixed placements, you know, 2020, 2021, especially 2021 and 2022 has been your hard couple of years. So my fixed placements are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. And that is because you had Saturn in Aquarius. And so one of your angular houses, your big houses in your birth chart, were getting hit with this. So I feel like this now that we have Saturn in Pisces, I feel like this Saturn retrograde, there's going to be a full circle understanding about the energy that came through with your past sudden shifts over the last two years, 2021 and 2022. And there's going to be a shift back into a new direction with a good outlook, you know, again, a good positive outlook and a good positive attitude about the shifts that have happened over the last two and a half years while Saturn, while Uranus was in Taurus and it was squaring Saturn. I mean, it was in those degree energy, two slow moving planets for a really, really long time. So by degree, it was in the square. And then just by the whole sign house, it was also in a square. And now that we're out of that, this is really for my fixed sign placements. I feel as though you're having a final understanding And with Uranus, there's sudden shifts, there's sudden plot line, there's things that come out of nowhere that you didn't expect to happen that sort of shifted your lifeline a little bit, you know, your timeline a little bit. Um, That happened and that happened for a hard for a lot of my fixed placements, but you guys trooped on. So now there might be another sudden shift, but it's going to be back towards the positive direction. It's going to be the sudden shift headed towards the direction you really want to go. And again, I think the big thing with this energy is going to be about a deep understanding about why things happened and being able to close that mental and emotional chapter and no longer feel stuck or resentful or lost or feel like you need closure. You're going to be getting all of that with this Uranus retrograde. Now, let's talk about my mutable signs because we're going to hit a lot now that Saturn's in Pisces in so many different directions. And this past weekend, we had the sun opposite Saturn. And this transit, honestly, when the sun goes opposite Saturn, it only happens once a year. It squares Saturn. The sun will 
square Saturn twice. Uh, it will conjunct Saturn, but it only goes opposite Saturn once a year. So it can be kind of a big chart. I mean, a big, a big chart. It can be a big transit. And I don't know about you, but for me, I have a lot of mutable placements. Sunday morning, I woke up feeling pretty good, but also like cathartic. And this is happening in my chart. This is happening in... I have a seventh house, I have a Virgo rising, Virgo moon, and directly opposite is Pisces. In my Pisces, I have a natal Mars on the descendant at zero degrees in Pisces, where Saturn is currently retrograding and being right now. So again, with this Saturn, we're feeling it, my Gemini, Virgo, Sag, and Pisces people. And for me, since Saturn moved into my seventh house of relationships, I've had some really interesting reflections on relationships. I felt separate from relationships. I felt lost in relationships. I felt, what do I really want when it comes to uh, friendship, when it comes to lovers, when it comes to joy and pleasure, all those things? What do I actually want in someone? And, and it's been just some interesting shifts because how it's been playing out is showing me where I'm scared to connect. Where am I scared to have intimacy with people? Where do I run? That's actually one of my one of my uh, flaws, if you can believe I have some. No, I'm kidding. Is that sometimes when the going gets tough in a newer relationship because of my past, I'm talking even friendships, um, some things that have happened, I have a hard time. I will just run. I'll just be like, okay, well, yep, I'm not going to even try to figure that out. Now, that doesn't go for people I've been friends with for a long time, but it's really just has been coming up as I've been meeting lots and lots of new people. So I came up with this through what's happening with me, but I feel like for my mutable signs, we all are getting some sort of um, look into relationships. And again, I'm not just talking about romantic. I mean, all of our relationships, everything, every connection is a relationship. And sometimes this really came to me when we make someone the enemy in our head, are they really the enemy or did our mind turn them into the enemy? Uh, correct, right? So when we feel insecure about something and we feel like, how many times have you met someone? You're at a party, you meet someone and you feel insecure about yourself and maybe you didn't, you know, that person didn't meet your expectations of how they should respond to you. And then you go home and you start thinking, oh, oh, your head starts making the enemy. I didn't even like them anyways. I didn't like them, blah, 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 blah. But if you dig deeper, that usually comes from your own secure insecurity about how you feel about yourself. So you think, okay, so they didn't respond, so they must feel this way. It's almost like we try to predict their mental reasoning and we have no idea how they even feel about this. And I know I'm not alone here and I know other people did that. So dig deeper, because I think this is coming up for a lot of people with Saturn and Pisces, especially with the sun going opposite Saturn and Mercury retrograde happening in the sign of Virgo, is dig a little deeper. Is it really just... Um, you know, an insecurity that you feel about yourself. And so again, you make them the enemy based on what you think that they think about you, right? And our brain can be very, very tricky. And the emotions stay stuck in our body and have a physical reaction that tells the mind to trigger defense plan. When we haven't healed something that's in inside ourselves, it says, trigger that defense plan. What do we do? We're going to make that person the enemy. And maybe they aren't thinking any of those things about us. And for the most part, they probably aren't at all thinking anything about that. They're probably worried about their own insecurities and how they showed up in a relationship. And so it's an insecurity loop. And you need to start telling yourself when you're caught into that, um, this isn't true, you know, and it, it doesn't even matter. It is not true. But this really came to me channeled message this past weekend, as well as just with Mercury retrograde. What are you telling yourself again? So when you feel like you're making someone the enemy, is is that valid or is it you? Is it your insecurities? And then if it's like a protective. Like if I make them the enemy first, then I can't look at myself and feel like I'm the enemy. Or again, maybe it's just that insecurity loop. How many times are we constantly telling ourselves something that isn't true? A lot. And that's what we're here to work through. That's what we're here to work through on this podcast is helping break through um, those mental illusions that we tell ourselves because most of the time it is never true. You have no idea what someone is thinking. You are only in your head creating whatever you know. So remember that. If you start to think in your head, oh, you know what, they're this, 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 reflect a little deeper and say, am I actually only saying that or feeling that way because I'm actually insecure? 
and I'm worried that they must think that about me, so I'm gonna make them the enemy first mentally. So just dig a little deeper and reflect on that because we don't ever wanna be in that space, but our insecurity loops can be um, tricky. They can be very, very tricky. The mind is tricky, and my whole goal of this podcast is to help us get ahead of our mind, help us understand our mind, help us gain deeper awareness within that. So now the full moon in Pisces, let's talk about that. We have that coming in, like I said, Wednesday night, coming in hot at 9, what time did I say it was? Um, Oh yeah, 9.35 p.m. East Coast time. So we have the full moon in Pisces, and we know where Saturn is. There's a little bit of restricting emotions. There's a little bit in Pisces energy. It can be a little um, woe is me. It can get a little lost in emotions, can be very disconnect and wanting to disconnect, which is going to be a big theme. And we got the uh, sun in Virgo. So this full moon's happening within that access. And so there's going to be a little bit about rationalizing our emotions. Again, when we disconnect or we feel like we have a little bit of an emotional overblow, but the emotional overblow will come more very quiet. It won't be like fights and screaming and yelling like it can in other full moons. This is really going to be like a silent one where you may detach from someone or something, avoid something or some or someone, but still be losing it mentally about and emotionally by yourself and within yourself. So there's going to have to be some rationalizing your emotions, kind of like I just said about the insecurity loops. Does this make sense? Is this making sense in my life? Uh, what makes sense? There's going to be lies around what your mind tell you based on emotional fiction. And remember, our brains, they trick us into thinking or create a story based on a past emotional um, thing that maybe happened that gets triggered. Like I had said just previously with, uh, you know, the insecurity loops with this full moon will be, you know, lies that your mind will tell you. And it's true. Your mind tells you a lot of lies. Our mind is so powerful and we're just understanding how it works. But everything we watch, we see, we hear we take in and we never know how that is going to settle into our mind. And a lot of times there are lies that you have to stop and say, that is not the truth. That is not the truth. You are making that up. You're making that up totally, which is going to be a big theme with this full moon. Um, You may have to talk yourself off the emotional ledge, uh, releasing some subconscious pattern that could come up. Maybe it's something that you know there might be a pattern, but you haven't really kind of put the the head on the nail yet within that pattern that's coming out and so it comes out in a big way that you can no longer unsee it or you finally say okay this is it or you are very well of your subconscious pattern but when it comes out this time you're finally ready to change it or release it or say I no longer want this Uh, there's going to be revisiting old pain maybe for an understanding or maybe because you want to feel the pain again Now, that sounds crazy, but I know I'm not alone here, and I know a lot of people feel this way, is sometimes when we feel pain, which is, this feels a very, like, kind of Pisces, you know, full moon Pisces and Virgo a little bit, Um, you want to feel it again. You want to see, was that pain real? Um, Did I really love that person, place, or thing? So let me see how the pain feels now. Did it, does it, do I still feel it? And then that will validate my past, you know, love of a person, place, or thing. And some people just want to be stuck in it. Sometimes your brain will just play it. And maybe that's the subconscious pattern. Maybe that's the insecurity loop that comes out is that you just keep replaying this pain. And for what? Freeing yourself of responsibility or a burden. That really began this past weekend. I talk about it on one of my TikTok videos. And releasing yourself of a burden and responsibility. And if that really started to come to you this past weekend with the sun opposite Saturn and early into the week, then you release what's coming up to you. You free yourself of that burden, release the things that you have that were once you were once responsible for. Um, releasing, you know, this could also be pushing past your mental limits, but it forces you to make a change. That Saturn rules over our limits, creating limits, bringing limits, and only breaking through the limits <laughs> when it's, uh, you know, working with Uranus or some other planet about breaking through. With this full moon, though, there is that breaking through energy. So releasing the things, um, your limits, 
you know, again, you're pushed past your mental limits. And maybe that's physically, maybe you're doing it on purpose, like a physical activity, or maybe um, someone has pushed your limits and pushed your boundaries too much. And now you're making a change. Sometimes it takes us to be pushed very hard to finally say, I'm ready for a change. I'm ready to make a change. I'm ready to do something new. Releasing family identities. Now, I say this because this full moon is going to be conjunct Saturn. And when we look to Saturn, we look to our family karma, our family identities, our family structure, and we're going to be releasing that. This can also be overanalyzing your pain or overanalyzing your family patterns or trauma. Overanalyzing because <laughs> the sun is in Virgo. So this is also being interacted in with this full moon in Pisces. So what is your family pain? What is your family trauma? But there can be a little bit of overanalyzing it with the Virgo. You know, all Virgo an- energy is all about overanalyzing, overthinking, overwondering, overanalyzing, trying to, I know for myself as a Virgo rising Virgo moon, I will sit there and make sense of my emotions. I will sit there and play it out over and over and mentally over and over and figure out every little detail until I can finally make sense of my pain. And then that like kind of releases it for me. I know that's a very big Virgo trait. It's like, oh, okay. I I made sense of it. I understand it. Now I can use it to move forward. So I'll allow that that pain to be there. But there is this little bit of overanalyzing it. So don't make yourself too crazy. If you're starting to, if you're overanalyzing it and and you feel good each time you overanalyze, it's not going to always feel good right away. There are going to be crying and pain and things like that. But if you feel like overanalyzing it is starting to detriment you, then maybe take a little bit of a step back and just do it a little bit, not as much. Stop yourself. But again, sometimes that overanalyzing is needed. And maybe no longer wanting to identify with a pain or a family pain. We can get stuck in the victim mentality. And I think this is going to be coming up a lot too. With Pisces, there's a little bit of a victim mentality that can happen in that energy. Um, So, you identify with that family pain. You identify with that. And, and you say, well, this is happening because of that. Or I can't get intimate with someone because of this. Or my family did that. And there's a difference between explaining and understanding um, than still identifying and holding on to that. And so no longer, this might release where you no longer want to be that. I no longer need to identify Um, Like as a drug addict, right? As you guys know, I had many years in my younger days where I was a drug addict. And then I went to meetings and I still identified, even though I was clean, I still identified myself. And a couple years ago, I was like, I don't actually want that identity anymore. I don't, I want to release that. I don't want to hold, that's not me anymore. That's not who I was. That's a part of my past, but it's not who I am anymore. So that's what I mean. Some sort of identity with a family pain, You know, and pain within yourself. And so releasing that and no longer carrying it as a burden or a suffering within you. Because that is, it's already happened. It's already done. Yes, we need to reflect. We need to learn. We need to grow. But if you're still holding on to it, it's time to release that baby. It's time to go and move forward because you're just holding yourself back. And you're holding yourself in that pain loop, that insecurity loop and all those things. And finally, breaking through stuck mental energy. Like I said, the full moon will illuminate. And so there is that stuck energy that will be with Saturn and Pisces. But now we're breaking through a little bit. And we're finally, like I said, analyzing it. We're finally seeing it. We're finally sick of our own bullshit. And we're ready to make a change and shift. You know, you're no, I know for me and I know for a lot of people... And I've spent many years, because I did a lot of years in a 12-step fellowship, many years um, breaking through and seeing my own BS. And that is one of the most freeing things that you can ever do for yourself. But it is not easy. It can be very, very hard. But that equals freedom. So with this full moon, I want you to focus on who are you now? What do you identify with now? Write out two lists. Write out the first list of what you used to identify with that held you back now. You know, maybe before it didn't, but now it's just creating a fear loop. It's creating an insecurity loop. It's holding you back. It's keeping you disconnected. It's keeping you in a resentment loop. Write those things down that you used to identify with, right? Did you used to identify as being a kid who was abandoned? Did you used to identify as, you know, being a drug addict? Did you used to identify as this? Any of these sort of 
identities we gave ourselves and held on to that are no longer relevant in this current time, we need to let that go. And we need to push that and move that um, beyond. Then we have that. Then the next list, write out your new identities, right? What do you identify with? Do you identify with peace? Do you identify with the ocean? It can be anything. Do you identify with happy people, right? We need to have the list of, do you identify with a loving family? Do you, are you a loving you know, wife, daughter, spouse, friend, all those things? How do you identify now? So we got one list that we're no longer identifying with and you can rip that up, you can burn that, just shred it, get rid of that fucking list. And then we got another list a new list to show who we are today and who we identify with within ourselves. What kind of identities, what kind of energies are we allowing into our own personal energy, into our force field? What is happening? So I'm excited with this. And this all might sound a little scary, like, oh my God, I don't want to see all my family karma traits, blah, blah, blah. But remember... Remember, that's a fear loop. You have to get to the other side of fear. So much is on the other side of fear, especially when looking at yourself. And remember, this is happening in mutable signs. So this energy is something that's kind of already present and you're already aware of it. Um, but you just need a little extra kick and a little extra shift to move away and throughout this energy. Whew. That's what's happening this week, the big week. My kids went back to school. I know here a lot of people in um, the Philadelphia area, their kids go back to school this week and some next week. And I hope that everyone is having an amazing year. I wish all of my kids, you know, all my parents on here that listen, I hope that your children have an amazing year. All my listeners that are still in school, I hope you have an amazing year. I know my kids so far are two days in and it's been good. So I'm like, hell yeah. Let's have a good week, people. All right. I'll be back next week with an even more episode. Thank you, guys. I love you so much. I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you next week. 